How many of you have ever been in a meeting where you were nervous but pretending not to be? Most of us, right? All of us. It's happened to me many times, and we're going to talk here this afternoon as a way to wrap up the Executive Symposium about authentic leadership. And I thought I'd start by sharing one of the many times I've been in a meeting where I was nervous and pretending not to be. This was actually a pretty important meeting. It was about a decade ago. It was with my publisher. So my first book, the red one up there, Focus on the Good Stuff, came out in 2007. And that book was published by a publisher called Josie Bass. Um, they're actually located in San Francisco, near where I live in the Bay Area. And they're an imprint of a larger publisher called Wiley that's located right outside of New York. Anyway, we have a meeting for me to pitch my idea for what I was hoping was going to be my second book about authenticity. And I show up to the office in San Francisco, and my expectation was that I was going to be meeting with Alan, my editor, for the first book, and some of the folks on the team who'd worked on that first book. And I was excited. I was a little nervous about the meeting. It was kind of a big deal. We get into the conference room, and we sit down, and Alan's there and the team, and Alan says, Mike, before we start the meeting, we're going to wait for a few minutes. And I said, oh, okay. He, how come? He said, well, Deborah's coming to the meeting. I said, oh, Deborah's the president of Josie Bass, who I had not yet met. And he said, yeah, and Deborah's boss from Wiley, he flew in from New York for the meeting. To which I said, oh, great. But that's not actually what I was thinking, right? I was simultaneously excited, like, wow, they're really interested if Deborah's coming and her boss came from New York. But since I was not prepared for them to be there, I was now even more nervous. And the little voice in my head was saying to me, like, oh, man, you should have prepared more. You're going to mess this up. The whole time, though, I'm acting, oh, great, great. It'll be great to meet them. But now, you know, my mind's racing, my heart's racing, we're waiting. A few minutes, they show up, they walk into the room. They're really nice, friendly people. They weren't super intimidating, like, by their presence. But given who they are, now I'm really nervous. And they might, so Mike, tell us about the book. So I go into my little pitch. <clears throat> and you know how usually when you start a meeting like that, maybe you're a little nervous or anxious at first, and then you get into it, and it kind of goes away? Yeah, that wasn't happening. Right? And it wasn't like I was making a fool of myself and forgetting what I wanted to say. Or, I mean, but it was more just like inside, I was having like an emotional wrestling match with myself. And after a few minutes, it was driving me crazy because my anxiety level was going up instead of going down. And I stopped right in the middle of my pitch, my little presentation, and I looked right at Deborah and I said, hey, Deborah, listen, <clears throat> I know I mentioned this a few minutes ago when you came in the room. I said, it's really an honor to meet you. I appreciate you coming to the meeting. And I turned to her boss and I said, and you flew all the way out from New York, um, I said, but I noticed that I'm feeling really nervous and I'm trying hard to impress you. I said, can I stop doing that now and just be myself? And literally as it was coming out of my mouth, the voice in my head was screaming at me, don't say that out loud. Like, what is the matter with you, right? But after I said it, I sort of paused and there was kind of an awkward pause as I looked around the table and I could see the looks on people's faces. They were like, did he really just say that out loud? But something interesting happened after the awkward pause was that Deborah laughed. So did her boss. So did everybody else around the table. So did I. And more than laugh, it was like I took a breath. And I said, listen, here's what I know about authenticity. I know it's important. I know it's important to me. I know it's important to just about everybody I know. I know it's important in the relationships I have. I know it's important to the clients that I work with and the teams and the leaders that I work with. I said, I know it's important. I said, but I also know it's challenging. It's one thing to say I'm going to be and operate and communicate and lead authentically. It's a whole other thing to actually do it. I said, so I want to write a book about that. Why is it so challenging? Is there anything we can do to make it a little bit easier? And in that moment, I stopped pitching my book and we just started to have a conversation. Why is it challenging for me? Why is it challenging for them? Why is it challenging in their organization, in their industry? Why is it challenging for some of the teams and organizations and companies I was working with at the time? And we just had a conversation and we spent about 45 minutes talking about it. The meeting ended. Alan says, Mike, we'll give you a call. And I leave the meeting and I head back to my office and do that thing after, you know, after a big meeting, you do the like debrief, at least in your head, like, oh, I should have said this. Why didn't I say that? That whole thing. And I was like, are they going to call me? I don't know. But something interesting happened that day. And I learned something really important that day. And I've learned a ton in the decade or so since. The thing that happened that day was Alan called me at the end of the day in my office and he said, hey, Mike, I wanted to get back to you and just let you know. Um, first of all, when you left, we talked about you. He said, we all agreed that was one of the strangest pitch meetings we'd ever been in. He said, but we really appreciated the nature of the conversation, and I wanted to let you know that we're interested in publishing the book. So I was super excited, as you can imagine. And the thing that I learned that day was as important as it is for us to be prepared in life and business as leaders, as I'm sure all of you know how important that is, I've spent a lot of my life trying to be as prepared as possible. Sometimes in life, it's just as important, if not more important, to actually be present. 
to show up authentically in the moment and respond to what's happening or how we're feeling or what people are saying or doing. And the thing that I've learned over the last decade is I researched and wrote that book, The Blue One, Be Yourself, Everyone Else Has Already Taken, and have since now studied authenticity for the last decade, and it's been part of not only the other books that I've written, but a lot of the research that I've done, is that authenticity is fundamentally important, probably more important today than ever, and is challenging for a number of reasons. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. What does it actually mean to be authentic, particularly to be an authentic leader? It's kind of one of those things, we all sort of know what it means, but we're gonna sort of dig down a little bit deeper into it to break it down and deconstruct it a little bit, and then look at what are some things that make it challenging for you as well as for how you interact and engage with your other leaders in your organization in an authentic way, and then look at some specific things that you can do to infuse not only the way that you lead, but the way that people around you lead and the way your organization operates, infuse that with authenticity.